continuing with our transformations of functions discussion. This time we're talking about whether a function is even or odd, where it is symmetric, and where it is increasing, decreasing, and constant. Y-axis symmetry. The graph of a function f has y-axis symmetry or is symmetric with respect to the y-axis if f of negative x is equal to f of x for all x in the domain of f. Such functions are called even functions. Okay, what exactly did all that mean? If you could take a negative x and put a negative x into your function for every x and simplify it, and the result that you get is exactly the same thing as your original function, then it is an even function and it is symmetric about the y-axis. So let's look at this example. What I want you to do is replace all these x's with negative x's. We'll have 7 times negative x to the 8th. So just replace all those x's with negative x's. and then simplify it. What do you get when you raise a negative to an even power? You end up with the positive, right? So you just get 7x to the 8th. Well, how about this one? You're still raising a negative to an even power, so the 5x to the 4th remains negative. Here you have a negative x all squared, so that one remains the same. And then we have minus 3. Well, if you notice, the result that we got here is exactly the same as the original function. If that happens, then the function is even and it is symmetric about the y-axis. That just means it's the same on the left side of the y-axis as it is on the right side of the y-axis. Origin symmetry. The graph of a function f has origin symmetry or is symmetric with respect to the origin if f of negative x equals negative f of x for all x in the domain of f. Such functions are called odd functions. Well, what in the world does that mean? You do the same process. Sorry about my dog. Okay, so you do the same process. You plug in negative x everywhere there's an x, simplify it, and if the simplified expression that you get is exactly opposite what you started with, then the function is odd and is symmetric about the origin. Have a look at this one. Again, replace all those x's with negative x's. So instead of x, I go back and I put negative x for everything. Negative x to the fifth power is a negative x to the fifth. So you have negative 4x to the fifth. 6 times negative x is negative 6x. You can pause here and have a look. This sign is opposite this one. This sign is opposite this one. So this entire expression is exactly opposite what we started with. Another way you can look at it is this. If you factor out a negative 1, you would end up with 4x to the 5th plus 6x. Here you can see it's the exact opposite of the original function. If that happens, then you have an odd function and it is symmetric about the origin. By the way, if it is symmetric about the origin, it's kind of like you can take the graph and spin it around the origin and it would stay the same. So that, like a fan, you spin it like a fan. Maybe we can see some examples of that. Symmetry of equations. 
we say that an equation in x and y is symmetric with respect to the y-axis if replacing x with negative x results in an equivalent equation. That's what we did in that first example. The x-axis if replacing y with negative y results in an equivalent equation. We didn't work one like that and it's symmetric with respect to the origin if replacing x with negative x and y with negative y results in an equivalent equation. We worked one like this, although we didn't talk about it in these terms. So we want to sketch the graphs of some relations. First of all, remember what this one looks like. We've actually done this one before. It is a function because this is what it looks like when you sketch the graph. Now, if you were to go in and replace all the x's with negative x, negative x all squared is a positive x squared, this is exactly what we started with. In that case, you have an even function, and it is symmetric about the y-axis. You can see how it's the same on the right as it is on the left, that's what make, makes it an even function. So how about b? We have x cubed minus x. Now as this states, we don't really have all the tools yet to graph this type of function, but we could just plot some points. We can get a general idea. Well, what happens if we replace all those x's with negative x's? we have negative x all cubed minus a negative x. That would end up being negative x cubed plus x, which is exactly opposite what we started with. So this does represent an odd function. You can have a look at this. If you were to spin this graph around that origin, you would have the same graph again. Just spin it around and it looks exactly the same. That's kind of what it means to be an odd function. It's symmetric about the origin. Okay, how about c? x equals y squared. If you were to graph this one, it would be a horizontal parabola instead of a vertical one. So this one's actually not a function, but let's see what it looks like. If you were to replace y with negative y, it looks like this. Replace this y with a negative y. We end up with x equals y squared, which is exactly what we started with. Now remember, you replaced y this time, not x. That means that it is symmetric about the x-axis. You can see it's the same above the x-axis as it is below the x-axis. The next thing we're going to talk about is where a function is increasing, decreasing, and constant. You can pause the video here and read through all of these things if you like, but I think it's easier just to work some problems so that you can see what's going on. Now I do want you to get this terminology. If you're talking about where a function is increasing, decrease, decreasing, or constant, you're talking about the function's monotonicity. So that's what we're going to be talking about here. Now, before we continue, think about the slope of a line. If a slope is rising from left to right, it's said to have a positive slope. If it is falling from left to right, it's said to have a negative slope. And of course, if it was horizontal, it's said to have a zero slope. Well, we're going to use something similar to this whenever we talk about the increasing, decreasing, or constant. If your graph is rising from left to right, it is increasing. If it is falling from left to right, it's decreasing. And if it stays horizontal from left to right, it's said to be constant. Determine the intervals of monotonicity of the function f of x. Okay, before we do that, remember all the little pieces for this graph. First of all, the parent function is your parabola, this one. So this would be your x squared graph. 
Well, this plus 1 would make it go to the left 1, and this minus 3 would make it go down 3. So it, it would end up being down here like this. Now, I do have a better picture ready. It would look something like this one. So we took the parabola, we shifted it left 1 and down 3. So I do want you to get this point here. That's the point, negative 1, negative 3. Alright, so we need to determine where is it increasing, where is it decreasing, and where is a constant. Now whenever you look for these three things, you're looking at it in terms of y, because that tells you whether it's going up or down. But then you write down the interval over x that it is increasing, decreasing, or constant. For example, looking at this graph, it's falling from left to right until it gets here. Once it gets here, it starts rising. So on this side, it's increasing. So on this side, we say it's decreasing. That would be up to this point. So everything from way down here up to this point. That is where it is decreasing. So it is decreasing from negative infinity to negative 1. And it is increasing on this side. So from this x value all the way over here somewhere, it's going to be increasing. It's rising on this side. So it is increasing from negative 1 to infinity. Now this particular graph never flattens out, so we would say it's not constant, or it's constant over the empty set. Have a look at this one. The water level of a certain river varied over the course of a year as follows. In January, the level was 15 feet. From that level, the water decreased linearly to a level of 11 feet in June. The water remained constant at that level until September, at which point it began to increase linearly to a final level of 18 feet in December. Graph the water level as a function of time and determine the intervals of monotonicity. Okay, well I already have this graph for us, so let's have a look at it and see if we understand how to get this graph. So it starts at 15 feet in January, so these represent the months, and this will represent the number of inch, uh, feet, sorry. So right here we have January was 15 feet, it decreased linearly until June where it reached 11 feet, that's this one, and it remained at this level until September when it started to rise again to reach a level of 18 feet in December. So where is this function increasing, decreasing, and constant? Well, it is, incre is it increasing here? No, that's falling. This is flat. Here it is increasing. So it would be increasing from 9 to 12. It's decreasing from here to here. That means it is decreasing from 1 to 6. And then it is constant here. That means it is constant from 6 to 9.